We lost Stuart Scott this weekend at the age of 49, and a guy who spent a lot of time with Stuart and worked with him and did Sports Center with him is nice enough to join us now and give us some thoughts as well. My good friend and Don's as well, Steve Levy. Steve, this must not be an easy time for you. What are your thoughts about Stuart Scott passing? Well, I mean, I'm welling up again. You know, it just keeps coming back in waves just hearing you guys talk about him and hear the speech and the applause at the end of it. Um, you know, Stuart Scott, I know, never lost a fight. Uh, he's, that was one tough guy. I mean, uh, you know, he got he got down to being real skinny, you know, in these, this last year, maybe a year and a half. But, I mean, he was as physically fit and, I mean, cut up and tough uh, as as any sports anchor ever. <laughs> he was one of the toughest guys in the building. And, of course, he was into all the martial arts, too, and was always working on his moves as he made his way through the newsroom. So, um, you know, yesterday was one of those days I woke up. It was all, you know, everything was hazy and foggy, right? You're just trying to fight through the day. And then uh, you sort of power through because, you know, that was the job at hand. And we tried to make Stu proud last night on the show. And then, uh, and then once the you know, the lights turn off, the red light goes off, and then we all sort of you know weld up with emotion again, and it sort of takes over your mind. It was tough going to bed last night, and uh, really, as I'm lying there, all I could think about was you know, you know, his two daughters are are trying to sleep probably at that moment too, and mm-hmm. then finding that impossible. Steve, how about for you uh, personally having to fill in for him uh, on Monday Night Football? And so many of us knew he was sick but didn't know his condition. I'm sure you probably knew a lot more than some other people did. But how tough was that for you being close to him and specifically filling in his role on Monday Night Football late in the season? Yeah, you know, it was, it was you know, people were like, hey, great, Monday night. I'm like, well, you know, it's nice, but the reason I'm here is, is not great. And, you know, I, I tried to make that clear every time we went on the air that I was simply holding Stewart's spot. And uh, every city we went to, I mean, you know, I mean, Stuart crossed over, right? You know, we're sports broadcasters, right? That guy, he was a rock star. He was a movie star. So, I mean, every security guard in every stadium, obviously the players and the coaches, but the fans, uh, the officials, I mean, that was like the first sentence. Hey, how's Stu doing? Send him my best. Send him my best. And, um, you know, Susie was on the same, sort of the same deal filling in on the pregame show. And Susie had the luxury because she got to make the pick for Stewart, you know, the pregame pick of the game that night. And so she was always the one guaranteed to hear from Stewart every week. For most of us, you know, we go three weeks without hearing from him. But Susie, because of the pick and because she was really super close to Stewart, she had contact with him at least once a week. And we all knew, I think, uh, a week 17 or week 16, that she, even she didn't get the text uh, on the pick. I think she got it from his his extremely loyal girlfriend who has been a superstar throughout this whole thing. So uh, traveling around the country was um, was eye-opening, too, because I knew about the love in the building in Bristol because I'm there on campus. But to go everywhere around the country, north, south, east, west, Monday Night Football, to see the outpouring of love and support and well wishes for Stuart Scott, um, the guy was a game changer. The guy was a game changer, and, and millions of people who never met him I think they feel like they were friends with him because of the way he broadcast on the air. What really um, resonated with me today in reading all the tributes is that players genuinely seem broken up about it. And, they're, they're, I mean, as much as we don't want to admit it, there's a, um, there's a wall between the, the media and the players. Yeah. And most of the time the players don't like the media. But there seems to be genuine love. I mean, Michael Jordan uh, comes out and says, and Derek Fisher said, I never met a final man. Um, that, that, that's pretty heady stuff, Steve, and it tells you his standing in our industry. No question. He, uh, you know, dare I say he's closer than any you know, media member to, to the top, top, top uh, frontline athletes around. The, I think you know, while we see him as one of ours, you know, sports media, sports broadcaster, I think the players felt like he was one of them. He just didn't play the actual game. Um, I know he was extremely close. If you could have gotten him to, uh, to Stuart Scott's cell phone, man, you imagine the cell phone numbers yeah. he had. I'm sure he had Michael on speed dial, obviously Tiger, LeBron comes in. The President of the United States issues a statement. I mean, uh, if you ever needed a sign of how, how important he was, uh, to this country, the entertainment of so many millions of people on a on a regular basis, he got that sense. But uh, you are right; he had a special bond. He could mix, and he was comfortable with that. You know, if I'm at a party with those guys, I feel out of place, right? It's me. If Stewart's at that party, he blends in. He's one of them. Uh, people come to see the athletes. Want to take pictures with Stewart? 
They want his autograph. It's not necessarily the other way around. And, wow. And that's all part of the magic of Stuart Scott. And he had a personality, Steve, that I think was just so unique. And you look at this business now, and it's so watered down, and there's so many different ways to get information, that he just struck the chord at the right time to be able to express a personality a lot of people don't have. Game changer. You know, uh, obviously, when we were growing up watching, right, when we came to sports and everybody wanted to be Keith and Dan, you know, or Dan and Keith, right? And you, you figure out, and, it, and I would tell the younger anchors came and even after me, hey, you know what? Chances are you're not going to be them, but you have to be yourself, right? And you will ease into, at some point, your position. Are you going to be the funny guy? Are you going to be the smart guy? Are you going to be the knowledgeable guy? Are you going to be the great writer? You will find your own lane given enough innings. And uh, and Stewart sort of Stewart broke that and did his own thing, and for all the kids who wanted to be Keith and Dan, I would say there are twice as many kids growing up now who want to be Stewart Scott, and that's that's simply amazing uh, when you think about it. He is the rare guy, and again I bring up Dan and Keith because when we were watching them, if the Sunday night show came on and they weren't on it, I didn't care who was replacing them, anybody else, there was a little disappointment. Right. I'm still going to watch the show, but I want to see Dan and Keith. And I imagine there's a whole generation that when they turn on the TV set on Sunday night at 11 o'clock and don't see Stuart Scott, even before yesterday, there was disappointment. And now uh, now we'll, we'll never have that, uh, that opportunity again. That's a shame. Talking with our good friend Steve Levy, uh, remembering Stuart Scott, who passed away yesterday at the age of 49 after a long battle with cancer. Before I let you go, Steve, um, I, I did not have much interaction with Stuart Scott, maybe once or twice. You obviously work very closely with him. What type of guy was he? Forget about on the air. Tell me what type of guy he was. He was real. He was real. Um, again, we keep going, you know, he's a superstar outside of the building, right? But inside the building, he was real, and he was real regular. And uh, and during his sickness, I'll just, you know, take it behind the curtain a little bit. But So most of us have offices, and we do our own thing in our offices until, I don't know, 6 or 7 o'clock. And then we all meet in the newsroom, and that's where we write Sports Center. And Stewart would always come to the newsroom really late, and that's because he couldn't sit there because there would be a steady, uh, steady line of people lined up to, hey, how you doing? How you feeling? And he just couldn't deal with that. He didn't want to be. He was unbelievably private when it came to this personal battle. Uh, the thing he was most public about was were his daughters. He had one of his two daughters is a brilliant singer. And every time you turn the corner, there was Stewart handing his cell phone to somebody to show the video off of his daughters. Uh, he loved those two girls so much. I can't even imagine what they're feeling right now. Uh, I know hearing from, you know, intercommunications that uh, Stewart's parents and his daughter and his girlfriend, they all uh, saw the show last night, and they were pleased with how, uh, how he was portrayed and how could they not be. Um, but, you know, he was, a, he was a close friend of mine. Look, we didn't go to the club together. We didn't hang out. We hung out on remote once in a while, you know, Super Bowl here, Super Bowl there. But when I needed something, when I was dealing with my own personal issues, something he might have gone through, I could lean on him for that. And uh, he was super generous with his time, especially in the African-American community, especially the women uh, in that community, um, young broadcasters up and coming. Um, he gave a ton of time to those people, very generous in terms of charity as well. He was a super guy. And the shame is, guys, because whenever anybody passes away, right, people come out and say all these flowery things about people, so you can't really tell if it's true. Right. I am here to tell you I know this man, I feel this man, what I tell you is true, and I, I can't believe he's gone.